Welcome to the Texas Values Report. This is Jonathan Sines, president of Texas Values. Great to be with you on another glorious week in the state of Texas. It's great to be on Facebook Live because it's the end of the week. It's Friday for the video broadcast of this radio and video and update show of the week. And I got good news to report. So I'm excited we're going to talk about that. And it's not always the case from the state legislature, from the state capitol. But that certainly is the case today. I want to take more in detail about that because we're already halfway through the legislative session. If you're new to the show, we talk about the issues of faith, family, and freedom in the arenas of the courts, the legislature, and the media. A lot on the legislature these days, there's no doubt. And if you're watching on Facebook, share this post, put it in a group, like it. Let's get some really good traffic because we've got two great, great guests today. Our first guest on the show today is going to be Senator Angela Paxson. And hey, she's having a great week. So what a great time to have her on. She serves Senate District 8 from primarily the Collin County area from North Texas. She's in our, her second legislative session, been distinguishing herself well. Many people know that she is the wife of our Attorney General Ken Paxson, or we should say that his that the wife of the Attorney General of the State Center. However, we want to term it. Uh, people have got familiar with her in really her great service to our state, before that, working in education in the private and public atmosphere, and maybe her first time, maybe not, maybe it's her her time back. Welcome back to the Texas Values Report, Senator Angela Pax. Hey, it's great to be black, uh, back with you and uh, appreciate seeing you again. We just saw each other yesterday. We did. We've been seeing a lot of you and your team this week over the past two weeks, and that's a good thing because you've been doing great work. And let's talk about this. Senator Angela Paxton is involved in and supporting in the author of very important legislative um, issues this session, pieces of legislation that are priority items from the lieutenant governor. And one of those that we're going to focus primarily on today is Senate Bill 26. It's called the Freedom to Worship Act. And it makes it very clear that the government cannot force churches to close, particularly in places of worship to close, particularly during pandemic, disaster issues. And that's been so relevant after what we saw last session. So, and look, the thing is, when you deal with issues in government, we know that sometimes people are well-meaning, but we've got to have a consistent standard so government doesn't lose their way and start to restrict things. And that's what happened last year, though. We had government officials that, not even from just the beginning, but for weeks and months, were in an effort to put pressure on churches, forcing them to close, threatening them with fines, threatening some of them with jail time. So it's important that we got Senate Bill 26, had a great hearing on it uh, a week or so ago. And then this week, the bill was scheduled for a floor vote, a full vote by the Texas Senate. And you were leading this effort so well um, on the floor with the debate and eventually the vote this week. And I know she's got to move around a little bit. We're having some video issues. So we're going to be patient with her as she gets set up into a, a better setting. The, the beauty and the mystery and the adventure of being on Facebook Live. So Senator Paxson, tell us a little bit about why Senate Bill 26 is important to you and a little bit about what happened this week. All right, we're going to. OK, we can see you. I cannot hear you. Maybe the rest of our team. Greg, give me a thumbs up if you can hear her. I think we're having a little trouble with her audio and video. So while she's getting set up and navigating, I'm Senate Bill 26. How are we doing, Senator Paxton? <laughs> now we can hear you. Uh, I feel like President- All right. I, okay, so this week, the full Senate voted on your religious liberty bill, the Freedom to Worship Act. Tell us a little bit about the legislation and what happened on the, House, the Senate floor this week on your bill. Well, I guess the first thing you can notice about the bill is that it's number 26. Anything 31 or less means it was basically flagged as a priority bill by the Senate. And that's something that I really appreciate uh, from my colleagues. We passed this bill uh, with 28-2 vote, uh, meaning wide bipartisan support. And these were all members who were saying, yes, we believe that churches need to be able to meet without government um, interference. Um, the government should not be able to. 
And I know we're having some audio and video issues on Senator Paxson's side. I apologize for that. We thank her for doing her best to try to come in and out. All right, we're back with you, Senator Paxson. Go ahead. You're doing a great- uh, Churches should not be, oh. government should not be able to shut churches down by executive order. And, uh, you know, we saw a lot of that during the last year. Um, you and I were talking a little earlier about how we're coming up on Easter. And it, we're all reminded of last Easter where so many churches were not able to meet. Yeah, and look, this is an important time. And look, the bill protects to all you know people of any faith, but we know that there's such a large percentage of people, particularly in the state of Texas, that practice a Christian faith. When we come up on the issue of the timing of Easter, and for some people, I mean, I'm just going to say it, some people go to church on Easter and they don't go any other time of the year. You'll hear them commented on, on Christmas and Easter, and great, look, if that's you know the time of year people decide to focus a little bit more, but yeah, it came a little bit closer to home last year when we got to Easter, and you're thinking, really? I or, you know, my church isn't holding services in person. And many of those reasons was because pastors and church leaders felt the weight and the fear of what the government might be doing. And some of that uh, government officials were saying that, that they were going to uh, mm -hmm. enforce these things against churches. And some of them got creative, right? They had parking lot services for some government officials. That wasn't right. A, but getting together in a place of worship, in a location has so much value. I'm glad that that's behind us, but we don't want to forget that that happened. And so now we've got an ability to put a law in place that makes it clear, leaves no doubt. We ever find ourselves in a situation like this again, we know where the law stands. Well, we know where the law stands. And, and one of the important pieces of this legislation as well is that this legislation gives churches recourse. Um, yeah. if, a, if they are shut down by the government, it gives them the ability to um, to get a remedy, basically to um, you know go through. Yeah, they don't have to just sit there and allow this some this to happen if the government official doesn't want to respect the law that's in place if they don't want to recognize it. And so, and look, I you know I've been through these scenarios before, Senator Paxson. We've seen it where churches have had to go to court. And I mentioned that in my testimony, in the House and the Senate side, we'll go to court if we have to, but, but many of us would prefer not to. That's not where we want churches to be. We don't want religious leaders to have to go to court. It's good, though, if they have to, that they're going to have a law like Senate Bill 26 to back them up. And that's why it's important to get this thing finished. And it was great how you handled it on the floor. Getting that vote on the Senate is an important step. I think, too, um, the fact that churches have the ability to seek a, a legal remedy will cause government officials to think twice, mm -hmm. right, before they start doing things that have unintended consequences for churches. No, you're absolutely right. You know, we were wearing at the hearing uh, this week and in, in the House and last week. You know, it was interesting because on the Senate floor, and, and this happens sometimes. I mean, I just feel like it's God's hands, even though I get a little nervous. When everything's happening like in the same, but here on. Are with pastors, numerous pastors in House State Affairs Committee testifying in support of the House companion of this bill. And lo and behold, here was Senator Paxton on the Senate floor debating and discussing Senate Bill 26. So the House was hearing this version of this bill in committee while the Senate was taking it up for a full vote. And I'm kind of watching a bunch of different screens and we're kind of, you know, there's a little bit of um, nervous energy, but you handled yourself very well and you had people around you that were supporting you, but it was a great moment for people to see. This is important. Churches are essential. Making sure it's clear that way in law says something about where we are as a state. Absolutely. Well, and your, your team was great support um, helping us get ready for the bill helping us garner support for people to call their representatives. Again, I mentioned this wasn't a Republican Democrat vote and it shouldn't have been because we have Republicans and Democrats across the state of Texas that wanted to be able to go to church and wanna make sure they have that right protected in the future. Well, you're right. Look, bipartisan vote, 28 to two. That's a pretty strong statement on the Senate floor. 
uh, every now and then, you know, y'all all kind of agree with each other. But sometimes when it's issues that get a little bit more attention, you can see that split or divide. But that was great. And to have almost unanimous support. And that also meant you could only not only do second reading, but third reading for those of us that know the legislative process even more in detail, right? That kind of uh, prevented you from having to go on the floor another day. You got it uh, settled right there in that moment in that time period. But I want to reflect back for a minute, right? We think about Easter coming up, getting together in person, being able to share our faith together, being able to have that experience. You know, it's very special. And, and to go through another year where that might have happened is very concerning. And we heard that testimony, such strong testimony, even yesterday, people talking about, you know, being able to have those recovery groups, fighting addictions, having struggles in their family, you know, being able to get together. Uh, it just speaks to how important it is for society, for churches to be able to be open. I, I agree, Jonathan. And, and, you know, I think it's important for us to remind ourselves that what we're guaranteed in the Constitution isn't just the right to have a faith, it's to exercise our faith. Um, it's not just everyone can believe what they want. We have the right, the guaranteed constitutional right, to exercise our faith, to practice our faith. And in the Christian faith, that means gathering together. That means singing. That means praying together. And that's what we're protecting. Now, uh, look, and, that, and that's, that's part of worshiping. Uh, a, a lot of those different activities. And so, and look, I, I gave this stat out, you know, that I found house hearing yesterday. There's estimated over 29,000 churches in the state. That's a lot, of, right? And that's a lot of government power. If the government, you know, in one stroke of a pen could shut down close to 30,000 churches in the state of Texas, too much power. Mm -hmm. Senate Bill 26 is a check on that power. It provides that accountability, as you mentioned if there is some type of violation for there to be recourse. But I do think it says something about our state. I, I really enjoy too the bipartisan aspect of it as well. And the opportunity for people to come, we're talking with Senator Angela Paxton. She is the author of Senate Bill 26, the Freedom to Worship Act. You mentioned it earlier, that low bill number under 21 signifies mm -hmm. that it's a priority item from his office. We heard Governor Abbott say some very important things um, in his state of the state speech, not specifically referencing this bill, I don't know if we were even calling it then, but talking about wanting to protect um, people's freedom to worship and not allow government to to control that. I, I don't think it's um, you know really an assumption to think the governors would be supportive of this as well. We've got one chamber on our under our belt, so to speak. Now it's over to the house. I know you've got some colleagues over there as well, but I think we'll find that unifying support in the house as well. No, I, I think we will too. And, and you know, I, I don't want to miss opportunity to also talk about when we talk about the process of legislating. Um, this bill came to my office from a pastor that lives here in my district. And he was um, really concerned about not being able to meet. And he said, listen, we're, we're trying to do safe things in our congregation. We don't want right. people to be sick. We don't want the elderly people to be in in, a, in a, a worse situation, we want to take care of people, and we're willing to do things to make sure that people feel safe. No, you're absolutely right, and it looks like we might have had a little audio or video um, issue there with Senator Paxton. We heard that in testimony. Trust the churches that they're going to approach this in a safe manner, and I don't think a lot of people have a problem with that, right? If there's some safety protocols, but allow the churches to make those decisions on their own. It doesn't mean you need to close them down uh, in, in order for um, to, to stop the spread. Exactly. And so, but you're right there. And many of us have made those adjustments. Okay. Um, we're willing to, you know, to adopt some safety measures, but don't, don't prevent us from getting together. And that's what your bill's about. It's great that we've got pastors and it doesn't surprise me, right? A pastor mm -hmm. came to you and said, Hey, this is a real problem. Can you come up with a solution? Yeah, and I, you know, I'm really, um, I'm, I was proud of this pastor for engaging with me, and and uh, he actually, his son-in-law was in the gallery yesterday when we um, passed the bill, as long, wow. uh, along with um, some members of their congregation, which was really cool. 
Um, but but you're right. It, it really did say something that we were able to do the process all in one day. Typically, it takes at least a couple of days to pass a bill. But the fact that we were able to do the three votes um, all in one day was because the members agreed to do that. They all recognize this is important to the people of Texas. And I have to give another shout out to Representative Scott Sanford, who's carrying the bill in the House and was in committee, I believe, until like four this morning, laying out his bill. And I'm super proud of him because, number one, he's a pastor. Number two, he's my state representative. <laughs> That's right. No, and, and I will tell you, I've witnessed it firsthand. He did a great job. A lot of people don't realize that. He's an executive pastor of Cottonwood Creek Baptist Church right there in the Collin County area, right? Your, your state representative representing you yep. well and carrying the companion bill. He's got a great reputation mm -hmm. and relationship with House members. It matters so much. He had an issue come up with the city of McKinney dealing with how they wanted to restrict churches. So there are a lot of actual personal stories that speak to the need for a piece of legislation like this. And that's what you do in 140 days. And half of those days are already over. Senate Bill 26, the Freedom to Worship Act, has been approved by the Texas Senate. It's now headed over to the House. A little bit more work to do. But Senator Paxson, you've done a great job. And probably not over on this bill just yet, even though it's moving over to the House. Uh, we want to see it through all the way to the end. But your leadership has been so key on this. And we're grateful for the hard work you're doing. And we're thankful that you got to spend some time with us today on the Texas Values Report. And as I was saying, we, we lost a little audio and video there. We're just saying thank you to Senator Paxson for being our guest today on the Texas Values Report, doing a great job with the Freedom to Worship Act, Senate Bill 26. We wish you well, Senator Paxton, and look forward to continue to working with you on this issue. All right, we apologize that we're we're having some audio visual uh, technical issues with Senator Paxton, but we know she would have said thank you in response. <laughs> uh, and and we enjoy having her as a guest, and we'll continue to work with her and her great team over there for uh, in the senator's office but still some work to do on the House side. The House version of the Freedom to Worship Act is House Bill 1239. And that is by Scott Sanford, who we're gonna have as a guest on the show today too as well. You're gonna hear him talk a little bit about that. And um, excuse me, on the audio portion of this, if you catch the podcast uh, that comes out at noon tomorrow uh, for the Texas Values Report, check that online, check the bridge, and you'll hear our recording that we had with uh, Representative Scott Sanford earlier this week, we were able to get a little bit of time in with him. And look, I'm going to go about two or three more minutes before we wrap up, because next week, speaking of the Texas Senate, there could be some uh, also some other important bills. We think the heartbeat bill, Senate Bill 8, is going to be up for a vote by Senator Brian Hughes uh, on the Texas for the full Texas Senate to consider. Um, Senate Bill 9, the Human Life Protection Act, other pro-life bills could be up for votes, too, in the Texas Senate. And want to get those bills over to the House. And we're going to see them start moving on the House side, too. And right now, okay, Senate Bill 29 is being heard in Senate State Affairs. This is the Save Women Sports Bill, the version of that on the Senate side, if you want to support that issue. We don't think um, it takes away spots from women when biological men are competing in women's sports. Senate Bill 29 is a priority item by Senator, excuse me, by the Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. The bill is being carried and authored by our good friend, Senator Charles Perry. Members of our team are at the Capitol right now. I'm in the radio studio, okay? That's the benefit of having 12 members of our team at Texas Values. They're in the Capitol getting to ready to testify on these common sense pieces of legislation. And look, next week, it looks it's been a busy two or three weeks, but that's what happens when the issues you're working on start taking priority, which is great. We're not waiting till the end of the legislative session to get to these issues, which oftentimes has been the case. So, but that means our, I tell you what, our team has been working around the clock and it is no exaggeration. If you saw some of the committee hearings yesterday uh, on other issues, border security, election integrity, uh, second amendment, in addition to some of the work we do, those hearings went uh, through the night to the next morning. All right, but that's what you do when you care about these issues of faith, family, and freedom. You're there to make sure that they're protected. You've got to show up at those hearings. That's why our 
team is there. And look, you can come any time of day to go sign up on bills. We'll help you with those issues. We'll help you understand how to navigate things at the Capitol. That's what we do at Texas Values. And the reason I just mentioned about the level of our work is I just want people to know we're there around the clock when we need to, because that's the type of professional commitment we bring. And it's another reminder as we get towards the end of the month of why you might consider donating to Texas Values. We are a nonprofit organization. Go to txvalues.org. You can make your tax-deductible donation today to support our work for faith, family, and freedom. Honestly, look, that's the only way to get these things done. And while having citizens come and testify, we couldn't do it without you. But when people support us financially, I do this work full-time. People ask me that sometimes. Is this your full-time job? Yes. Okay, it's actually more than full-time sometimes. You have to be in a full-time position to be able to stay on top of these things on a day-to-day basis for us to tell you what's going on and have you come to the Capitol a couple of days during the session. But we're there all 140 days of the session. That's how long it lasts going into May. And you got to have that type of commitment. You got to have professional people that can do it. People with law degrees like myself, like Mary Elizabeth Castle, Jonathan Covey, people that understand how to raise support like Joseph Walter, who people understand technology and communications. I could go down the list of the qualifications for our team. My point to you is this is the kind of effort and the kind of background and experience that you have to have in order to be effective on a day-to-day basis like we are. That's what you get at really a fraction of the cost, so to speak, for other entities. But we need your financial support. Go to txvalues.org, make a tax-deductible donation today. Our budget's about $1.5 million a year. We try to turn around and put those resources right back into our work, and it is happening right now. So much of our ability to protect our values happens during our state legislative session, which only meets every two years. So please consider supporting us right now, txvalues.org. Make that tax-deductible donation. Help us protect faith, family, and freedom in the state of Texas. And we'll talk to you next week on the Texas Values Report.